Good morning, Facebook. I'm Erie Times News online reporter Sarah Grabsky. I am coming to you live this morning from Waldemere Park and Waterworld. We have such a fun and unique tour uh, planned for you guys today. So here standing with me, we have Steve and Brian Gorman with Waterworld, with Waldemere and Waterworld. There we go. Um, so on the other side of the camera, we have our photography supervisor, Christopher Millette. He is going to be fielding your comments um, and your questions, so make sure you submit them. We are here. Uh, bear with us as we kind of move around the park today. We've got some, some unique kind of things for you guys planned. Um, but in the meantime, we're going to be asking Steve and Brian some questions. Um, so feel free to stop us with your questions and your suggestions and your comments as they come in. So let's start about, uh, let's start talking about uh, this last weekend was opening weekend for Waldemere, right? So how did it go? It went well. It was probably one of the best uh, opening weekends we had in a while. It was nice and warm, and uh, everyone was itching to get out after it snowing in late April. So <laughs> it was a very good opening weekend. Good. So let's talk about uh, what's behind us right now. <laughs> um, it's the balloon race, right? One of the new rides. Sure. This ride is from Italy. It's um, we call it the balloon race, and it is for young children and their families because adults can ride with the children. And uh, it's going to be very popular. It's very colorful, as you can see. We can fit a lot of um, guests on it, so there could be 32 children riding. One adult per car can fit as well. And uh, I think it's going to be very popular. In this area, that we used to have a pool that was part of the water park for children, but once we built the kids zone area last year, a few years ago, we didn't need this pool anymore because we had a much better attraction for the kids in the water park. So we absorbed this area into the water into the amusement park and made it made our kitty land bigger so tell me what else is new here this year let's let's focus specifically on waldemere and then we'll talk water world um yeah so our new attraction is the balloon race um, for waldemere we have a few other things that we have um, reworked to make our guest experience better one of them is right next to us in our cookie house um, we remodeled that uh, we have a uh, new um, offerings such as smoothies, fruit smoothies, and um, savory smoothies as well. Um, we have hard ice cream uh, so we can make you know nice ice cream sundaes and things like that for our guests and uh, really turned out well. The other um, food stand we reworked was the Fudge House which is um, up at the top part of the park. Again um, completely redone uh, to make it uh, much more efficient and, um, and easier to order great things for, uh, for our guests. So let's talk water world. There's a new slide, right? We have a new slide we call the Cannonball, which is uh, adding to a complex that was called Austin Tucson. And it is going to be fun. We're going to go walk through it, right? Yeah, right, 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 right. So it's a bright purple and pink colorful slide, and you go on one or two people can ride on inner tube, go through the tunnels, and then at the end you end up in a bowl. And you spin around the bowl and shoot out into the splash bowl. It's, it's very fun. I did it. It's very fun. Kind of like a toilet. Yeah, yeah. Some I mean, people, not to be crude, but it's not like that. Some, some people think of it as being flushed down a toilet. Right, right. Okay, let's start with um, an emailed question that we had come in. Um, there was a, 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 a email, I don't know, user, Ashley, who um, asked, she, she screenshotted an event from a Cedar Point, it's, they called it a dive-in movie. Um, basically, it would be a special event. It's a special event um, where it would be a screening of a movie in the wave pool. So, like, users would basically sit and watch the movie there. She asked if Waldemir would ever do anything like that. And I thought that was kind of interesting. What do you guys, what are your thoughts? We know that a few other parks have in their wave pool at night. They might have, uh, what she's talking about is you might be able to ride on inner tubes in the wave pool at night when the yes. waves are not running in a calm manner and they show a movie on the backdrop of the wave pool. Right. And it's like a, like you said, it's an after hours event, a right. special event. At this point, we feel that, and I feel, that that might be a safety issue because it's dark. And, uh, you know, if someone slipped into the water and had a problem with the water, how would our guards know that there was someone in distress? So at this point, I feel that safety rules, and we will, we will not offer that today. Right. right, that makes sense. Um, all right, so do you guys want to start the first leg of this tour right now? Um, so I guess we'll kind of give you a rundown of what we're going to be doing. We are going to um, walk up the Ravine Flyer roller coaster. So you're going to be seeing Steve. Um, yep, yep. He's going to be kind of leading the charge here. And um, he and I will both kind of walk you through, except um, he's going to be 
the one who's gonna be fielding most of your questions for this portion. So, um, but yes, it's kind of like a spectacular view that um, a lot of people maybe normally don't get to see. So, um, as we're walking and talking, Steve, tell me a little bit about the Ravine Flyer. It's all, it's turning 10 this year, right? The Ravine Flyer 2 is turning 10 years yes. old in a, a few weeks, and it's our obviously most popular attraction, right. and it is, as a wooden coaster, it is ranked number seven in the world for popularity by coaster lovers. It is the tallest wooden coaster in Pennsylvania. Watch. And then it, it's also the tallest, tallest wooden coaster in New York too. Uh -huh. And it's the 10th tallest in the country. That's amazing. So it's a really big wooden coaster. It's kind of deceiving because, <clears throat> it's kind of deceiving because. How about we turn, let's yeah, turn yeah. around now. Yeah. Let's, let's let leave Steve leave. It's a little, de it's a little deceiving because the hill is 80 feet high off the ground, okay. but you drop down another 40 feet okay. off over the hill. So it's a 120 foot drop. So it's, okay. when you look at it from the ground, it doesn't look like a big coaster. Right. But when you get, once you get up to the top where we're going, you say, whoa. You say, whoa. <laughs> and like Sarah was saying, a lot of people don't have time to take in the view, which right. we'll have right now, right. because you're going too fast. Right. But it's, it's probably my favorite place to be in the park. Yeah. To go to the top of the lift hill and be up there. So because tell me, it's quiet. Yeah, right, right, right. And you can see Lake Erie, like like no other place in Erie County. Yeah, exactly. Well, we are lucky enough to get to be the movie today. So is this kind of still yes. one of uh, the main, a main attraction? In yeah, yeah. Movie. it's our, I would call it our signature ride, which okay. is what draws people from out of town maybe if they're, okay. if they like amusement parks and coasters it gets the most attention in the, in the media absolutely um we have the most riders on this ride compared to other rides in the park right um we have about three hundred thousand riders in one every summer that's amazing all right do you want to turn around <clears throat> yes i will okay. and a question uh any plans for more family rides uh in the in the next few years why don't you why don't you let steve get ahead of you okay steve why don't you jump ahead and the question is about adding more family rides or any other plans for the park. Yeah, we've ordered a ride for next season, so 2019 season. We've ordered a ride that is a, we have a photo ride that we could show you. It's a pendulum ride. Uh, Kennywood has one that, that is a large circular ride that spins, and it goes like, like a pendulum, like the Sea Dragon, and it can go upside down. We have the ability to program it if we want it to go upside or not. So we'll kind of gauge how our guests feel. If they like going upside down, we'll, we'll run it upside down. What is so, we have, so we have that plan for next year. That's a given because it's already ordered. And then we have other, uh, other music rides planned as well. Nothing in stone yet, but we have a lot of ideas. When the ravine was being built and you were looking at, at this view as it came into, into view as the ride got bigger and bigger, what were you thinking and you know, why is this such an important part or feature of the ride? This view. Well, <clears throat> there was a Ravine Flyer one way back, 80 years ago, and it was a big wooden coaster. Obviously, it was, and so we wanted. To, it was always a dream that, to recreate this. The view of the lake is just a, an, a, a gravy on top of it. Really, we were able to use the topography of the land to our advantage to make a really, really great ride. We're walking up 155 steps, so we're starting to get out of breath. And we're above the tree lines now, so we're, the wind will pick up a little bit. I just got a splinter. Yeah, watch out for the splinters <laughs> on the handrail. But from this view, we can see a good shot of Lake Erie Bay, obviously. And then, like in the wintertime, when I come up here, I see the ice huts from the ice fishermen. And then it's funny because almost two or three weeks later, you see boats. We have a great shot of Sarah's. We can see all the people down having their lunch at Sarah's. And uh, you know, like people say on a great day, on a good clear day, you can see Canada. That's but amazing. this is, we're about 150 feet above Lake Erie. You can obviously see the whole park, which the riders don't ever see because it's back, you know, behind them when they ride. Right. But it's a wonderful view. I thought the what goes into 
ride choice and like how you guys, you know, it seems like the last few years, especially like Waterworld has just taken off. How do you guys decide um, what goes into that, you know? Uh, I mean, Waldemere has always had a focus on family. So, um, you know, we're family owned and operated and we try to keep that um, demographic coming to our park. Um, you know, we're not a thrill park. We don't have a lot of, you know, high um, intense rides. So <clears throat> we really want to keep um, it family oriented, but also um, keep the family unit together. So not only are um, the rides a little more tame, enjoyable for all ages, but we want to keep the family unit together. So parents and grandparents can ride with their kids and grandkids um, and not separate the family so they can enjoy you know, the day together. So when looking for um, rides, we try to keep that in mind. That's our main focus. Talk to us a little bit about um, like what's at Waterworld now. I remember last year, I have a two-year-old daughter, when we went with my daughter, it was like, oh my gosh, I mean, completely different water park with the, uh, the new, the Lake Erie, the Brig Niagara attraction. Talk to us a little bit about the newness over there. So, yeah, we we were fortunate that we were able to purchase seven acres of land south of our park so that we could expand the water world. This was like five years ago. Um, at that, before that happened, our water park was was pretty crowded. It was pretty crowded, and it was we ran out of space. It was way overcrowded on hot days. So having that ability to grow the water park, expand it, was fantastic. So okay. we our goal first was wave pool first because that eats up a lot of people and it spreads them out a lot and right. it's a really fun attraction right but then we said wow we really have to handle the children <laughs> and so we put in we looked at other amuse other water uh, parks and other around the country okay and we really liked this the complex kids zone the first year with a big splash right, know, right, pad, right 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 and then eight slides off of it for children so we did that next because we had to hit you know we had to handle the children and then the Brig Niagara was something that I thought was really clever. We knew we wanted a play structure, like there's one in Splash Lagoon, you uh -huh. know, with a big ship that, and, and, I mean, a big uh, bucket, bucket right? that splashes okay. water and slides. But ha tied into the Brig Niagara was something that Paul, that our owner, Paul Nelson, had, came up with, and I thought was just a, a real hit, clever. Amazing. Yeah. Tied sure. in with the local history. Yeah. Was absolutely. it difficult to design that into a ride that was already designed? It was really easy because the company that we buy from. Obviously, they make this structure, and it's almost a. They make the structure pretty much the same, but then the theming, you can do whatever you want. And they had an artist just create the. You know, we sent them pictures of the Brig Niagara, and uh, she just created a, a wonderful piece. Question from a, a viewer Tell us about the history. This land has been owned by the Nelson family, I think, and also, what does Waldemir mean, and how's all that connected? Sure, so the history is. Uh, history is. Waldemir is. Uh, 122 years old, right, Brian? And it's been in the, the Nelson family in, wow, 80 years, 90 years, I'd say. Waldemere is a German word that means woods by the sea. You know, in Erie, there was one, uh, there was a lot of German immigrants, and uh, that's where that name come from, was the German. Waldemere started at the trolley park, Erie Trolley Company. And then it just once the automobiles came into play, the, the trolley cars obviously are gone. But but uh, there was like a thousand trolley parks around the country. We're only, we're one of only about ten that remain in the country. And um, any more about how the opening weekend went, and uh, you know just uh, families that you've seen before or anything like that. It's I think it's really fun to see when we're trying to get ready for the spring and you're working long hours to get ready, and then you finally see. Yeah. The familiar faces come back that have been waiting all <laughs> all winter for us to open again. I think that really makes me feel good. All the hard work is paying off when you have some diehard people who love us so much that they'll even come out when it's cool. As Brian said, it was a warm day, so we had more people come out. It was wonderful. So talk to us about some of the, the season passes. I know that Brian said that some people were having some trouble re uh, renewing. Um, that might, you might need to turn around. Yeah, Brian could Brian. talk to that better than me. Um, but I know that. Brian, can you talk a little bit about the uh, how the season pass uh, registration is going? Yeah, sure. I mean, season passes, since we uh, introduced them in 2010, have been a huge hit. Um, they're our best value of our um, park. 
you know, you, you pay for um, the pass and you can come as many times as you want and it pays for itself in three visits. So it's a great deal, especially for our local guests. Um, it's always an issue since they're so popular of how we process them. So we have to take your photo and um, print out uh, an actual season pass card to give you. And that just takes a little time. So at the beginning of the season, they're always long lines, um, which we try to do our best. Um, but because of their popularity, we just, we have lines. So um, we introduced last year um, the ability to renew your pass online. If you have your old pass, you just type in your, the numbers on your um, season pass card and you can renew your pass and um, use that same pass without even ever seeing us. And a question now for Steve, would we consider um, expanding the train, making it longer at any point? Wow, that's a really interesting question. The train is about a mile long right now. It takes about 15 minutes to Not ride. Not the train, but the, the, the track. The, well, right, right. So The train ride. The train ride, right. So it's, it's 15 minutes long, it's about a mile. And to expand, to make that longer, I have not really contemplated that. We'd have to look at the geography. I think that it's pretty well landlocked where it is right now. We'd have to move a lot of structure, I think, to uh, make that longer. Um, real quick, let me just add that we are moving toward Waterworld to the new Cannonball ride, right? Yes. Okay, so we are going to also give you guys another unique kind of behind the scenes. We're going to walk up and in through the Cannonball sure. so you guys can see exactly where you're going. Now, Waterworld isn't open yet, but what kind of reaction from the folks that have tested it, from your staff, what kind of reaction? What are you thinking about it uh, now that you've been testing it a bit? It, it, it's a unique ride because it's... You know, it's very similar to the other two slides we had where you go on an inner tube and go through a tunnel basically and go in curves. But the end feature where you go in a bowl and get splashed heavily and you go around it once or twice or maybe three times and then you get you know, flushed out like Brian says <laughs> to the ball. It's just a different, a different kind of feeling and uh, it's more unique. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see how the reaction is. The people who wrote it really liked it. I liked it a lot, although it was just so cold. <laughs> you and uh, Paul Nelson have always been about um, making it better, like almost every year. Why is that important? In the music park industry, you really need to keep things fresh and, and introduce new attractions. You can't get stale. So we strive to always try to come up with new ideas. We visit lots of other parks. We talk to other parks that we're friends with and say what works, what doesn't work. And we, we really do our homework and try to understand what is best so we don't make a mistake. If we spend a million dollars on a ride, we don't want to make a mistake. And yeah, you found a way to keep all of the like eerie favorites too, like the Wacky Shack, like different stuff where it's like people remember writing that when they were like, you know, teenagers or something. And I feel like that's kind of like part of the like the attraction of Waldemere as well. Like come and ride your, your favorites and like what's familiar to you and then like get to do the new stuff too. So. Yeah, you know, one of my one of the funnest parts of my job too is to see like we were saying er earlier the the familiar faces that come back to yeah. us to, and, and come to work come to our park. But when you see a person who says, "Hi, I used to work here. I met my wife here, <laughs> and now we have children and I want to bring them to your park because I love your park." Right. And that just really makes you feel good. Right. Are, um, is there any age that is, well, the whole park is free. Uh, can, a, can a child of a certain age or a certain height ride for free, or that's a safety issue? So it's, how, how does that go with who's allowed on the rides and, the, and the, the fees for those rides? Sure, so the rides have restrictions on height, like you're mentioning, mm -hmm. and the manufacturers of the, of the rides set those rules, and we have to follow them by law. The, most of the small children's rides, you have to be 30 inches tall to ride. So if you're less than 30 inches tall, the only two rides you could go on are the train and the merry ground. But it's but it's free to ride those as long as you're with someone who's and, supervising and, you. And how about Waterworld, or at least the splash areas of Waterworld? Is there no fee for a certain minimum age or something? Yeah, so in the water park we have a true admission where you have to pay to go in the water park. But if you have a small handheld infant, that is not going to use the water and not then it's they're free you know but, but if if someone's going to use the water then we, we do charge charge and are the season passes available all season or only to a certain point of the season we have traditionally held, held a limit on how many we sell each year and it depends on how what time of year how many we how the selling goes to know when that stops so it's hard to say we've increased the quantity that we sell every year because we can handle more people what we were afraid of is to have too many people come to our park and be overcrowded. Right. Um, talk to me about like 
one of the things we've talked about this before, Steve, is you try and keep your ticket prices kind of affordable. You know, you keep adding new attractions, but have you in the past few years had to increase ticket prices here at sure. Waterworld? So especially water, the water park. The water park expansion so far has cost, uh, real quick guess, probably $15 million. Wow. And we have to, re we have to recoup that money. Right. That's one reason why we have the, f the full admission to get into the water park. Mm -hmm. um, but um, we try to keep it aff affordable. So the combo pass, you're right, has gone up in price. Okay. But we still feel that compared to other parks, you don't have to pay to park. We, we don't ever want to give up the free admission into the amusement park because right. we know that some people can't afford it. Right. And you want to have a budget that people can, you know, you have to try to work with, those, work with that. Yes. Um, there's some people that come to our park that just bring their own hot dogs, <laughs> bring their own drinks, they go to a picker shutter, they cook a hot dog, and they take their children on one or two rides. Right. And they only pay for one or two rides. And they, and they have a great time. And that's what I think that's also another thing that's interesting is that if you go to another park, like, say, Kings Island, that's near where I, where I grew up. You're gonna pay to get in. You're gonna pay, not pay to ride, but pay for food, pay for everything. Waldemir is that you pride yourself on that kind of affordableness of the tickets, right? Right. I, we re, we want to feel like it's a community park. Right. It's your park. You're coming to enjoy your own park in right. your backyard. Yeah. And not have to spend all your money. Exactly. Mark Sampson says hello from Florida. Hello from Florida. And uh, just while we catch our breath and before we introduce what's next, <laughs> um, you know, you said 17 million in the water park. That's a huge risk for Erie. Yeah. Short season, and I, I get it that the season is, no matter what, it's gonna be probably Memorial Day to Labor Day, but talk about was, was the whole investment a huge risk to begin with, and how did you, kind of, how do you uh, validate adding to it? Well, we knew from having the water park already for 25 or 30 years that, that what, the water park can work in Erie. The water park can work, even though the climate, like you said, is maybe a short season, but feel like we so we knew going ahead that we could we could grow the water park and it would work that's I guess that's my best answer all right so next we are going to go down the cannonball slide which as Brian has said is like a toilet correct so basically this is one of the new rides at Waterworld as you can just see we just walked through Waterworld there's so many bright colors so many different attractions um, as Steve said they just had uh, constructed a new kids zone that was what two years ago right and then last year um, a really neat U.S. Brig Niagara kind of zone. We'll check those out later, but we got to get down there first, and we're going to do that by walking down the cannonball. So here we go. So every ride and water slide has to be inspected by a state inspector. So we have eight, eight or nine full-time people on our staff that are qualified to do this inspection. I'm usually the one who does the water parks, so this is very common for me to walk through this slide. And it's warm in here already, it's warmer than outside because the heat rises and it, I feel a warm breeze coming up the slide. This is amazing. On the Sarah's garden. got her shoes on. I do. No, I, I took my shoes off. No on. high heels in the water slide. Yeah. <laughs> so when I'm doing the inspection, I'm looking for the seams and seeing if anything is unusual that might, you know, might be sharp so someone could get hurt. But being that it's brand new, it's, it's going to be... Uh, low maintenance for a long time, yeah. well constructed. Are there companies that specialize in like water yes. construction? This company that we buy from is making slides like this worldwide. They're well known. Oh, Chris, Chris is going down. <laughs> this this slide is, is uh, 328 feet long, which is like oh, the length wow. of a football field. Oh. And uh, I'd say we're probably two thirds of the way down now. There we go. It's getting steeper. Yeah, we're gonna get. Yeah, I can almost just. Yeah, there goes Chris again. We're gonna just slide down. Okay. This is so cool. I can't. I can now say that I've officially walked down a water slide. I don't know if I'll ever have this experience again. This is totally a bucket list item. Never, Sarah and me. Okay, now we're gonna slow down because we're gonna empty into the bowl. Oh I'm gonna go head first here. <laughs> Out of the slide, you go. You go in this direction. You circle around several times. It depends on your weight and how much, how you're coming out of the bowl. So, you might go once and go right down the hole. This is awesome. Or you might go around this 
this exterior perimeter two or three times and then go down the bowl. So where does, where do we, what happens when you yeah, go yeah. down the bowl? We're going to find when out. You go down this hole, when you go down this hole, you're going to just go into the splash bowl. Run, oh, one quick shot. Boom. All right, are but we going? It's, it's, not, we it's too go? steep to walk down there. Right and now. there's also water down there. So we'll. <laughs> We're going to stay up here. Okay. Five minutes. Let's All just right. bring it together. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then uh, we're hearing, uh, will the, uh, the, will any of the park be open for any weekends in the fall? Good question. <laughs> it's, it's always uh, a question that we get and we're always reluctant to answer it as much as we uh, want to, um, you know, extend our season to, you know, give that opportunity to our guests. And since our, our September's have been so nice in the recent past, um, it's just with our small staff, by, the, by Labor Day, we're all beat. Um, you know, we're open seven days a week for most of the summer, and uh, I mean, you're, you're looking at two of the people that are here almost every day trying to make it run. So until we grow our staff and get people, enough people knowing what they're doing to assist us, I think that um, it'll be tabled for now. Of course, we would always want to do it, so it's definitely not off the table. And as somebody who lived in Harrisburg, I'm thinking of Hershey Park in the dark and Christmas, you know, the lights and the Christmas. So, you know, it's just kind of a staffing and logistics issue for right now that we probably won't be doing that. Yeah, correct. Same with kind of, I, that was one of the questions. Another question that we got beforehand was, when is it going to open for the season? Because so, you know, people are looking outside today and saying 80 degrees and sunny. Does this kill you for it to be closed on a day like today? Uh, I mean, it does. <laughs> um, but again, there's so much that goes into it yeah. that, that um, a lot of people don't know. So, um, you know, being able to turn the switch and open for the day. Um, it's a little tougher than it seems, but of course, yeah, we always want to have good weather, and whenever it's nice, we want to be open. Steve, a uh, question. Uh, season passes for water park only, or is there only one season pass? We only offer the season pass for a couple pass, which is both a music park and a water park. All right. Um, a question for both of you guys. How far out, like you were talking, okay, you're going to do the pendulum ride for 2019. Um, how far out do you guys look? Like, are you thinking five years, ten years, or mm -hmm. what? We have both a five-year and a ten-year plan, so we try to. It doesn't always hold true to exactly what you plan out, but right now we're, we're we've ended the five-year plan, which is was basically the water park expansion, mm -hmm. and we're starting the next five-year plan. So oh, exciting! Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. So we're gonna wrap it up, you guys. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. I hope that you really enjoyed kind of this unique view of Water World, and we certainly enjoyed giving it to you. So um, make sure that you stay tuned in for all of our weekly Facebook lives. I can't promise that they'll be as lively this as this one, but we had fun. We hope you guys did too. So thanks for joining us.